Is your sense that uh, that enterprise engagement has gotten better for Google, that it's really growing its ecosystem and ability to compete here or no? 100%, I think you need to realize that it takes about a decade to create a $10 billion cloud infrastructure business. I think TK joining uh, Google has done a phenomenal job. Uh, obviously you have that TK2000 really targeting some of the largest enterprises out there, very focused uh, kind of go-to-market effort uh, that's changed uh, their success uh, on the uh, cloud front for sure. That now business is scaled to north of $10 billion. We'd expect it to continue to, to, to scale uh, at a fast clip. Obviously, you're competing with two other big cloud platforms, Microsoft and, and AWS, that uh, certainly are much, much larger in scale, but uh, Google's making up some, uh, some ground there for sure. Now, in your report, looking at some of these highest conviction new money cloud ideas to buy on the pullback, a couple of them, Twilio and Coupa, one could argue have already sort of been pulling back. They haven't done that much over the past year, but they're interesting, you know, uh, Coupa, from the cost management side, Twilio from that sort of infrastructure of a digital transaction side, uh, are those underappreciated now? What do you think drives them? Yeah, absolutely. In, in cloud software, we've been talking about this cloud transition for a decade. So a lot of these cloud software names are have high valuations. Uh, they, they are well appreciated. What you have to do is go where there's controversy. And I, there's some controversy around Twilio, there's controversy around Coupa, that creates opportunity. And I think those two assets are mispriced on Twilio. We think Twilio is the next $10 billion cloud asset. We just talked about Google getting that threshold. We think Twilio could actually become a $10 billion business before Snowflake. And that's a $100 billion plus business today. Market cap at Twilio is only uh, 57 billion, and we think it'll get to 10 billion in revenue before it lasts. In so we do think that uh, this whole direct to consumer uh, tailwinds driving Twilio will continue to kind of make that a much bigger business than people are giving it credit for today. Brent, you make the incredible point that the number of cloud stocks with uh, better than 40% growth has tripled. Uh, we all know it from watching the IPO market and the new issues here and at the NASDAQ. Um, are there too many? Companies, can the street reasonably research all of these effectively? Um, or do you think that there's bandwidth for that? It's getting harder. I'm not going to lie to you on that front. But listen, I think uh, while you have these household names, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, those eventually could consolidate the space over time. We think there's a, a, a long tail opportunity here where uh, even though maybe 80% of the market's controlled by the big five, the Alpha creation is going to happen in the 20% of the market, which uh, requires basically a little bit more homework. But I think there's great opportunity in the long tail of cloud software. Don't don't forget, most enterprises have large enterprises have a thousand different applications. So that's a lot of opportunity to create differentiation there. And what we're seeing is now this convergence of cloud software and payments that's opening up all sorts of new avenues for growth. Yeah, Brent, you really lay out the bull case here for the sector and particularly for those five companies. But I'm wondering what you see as the biggest risk to the cloud sector and which companies are most at risk to whatever those factors are. Listen, we're talking about a market that uh, has taken a decade to get to about 10 percent penetration. The penetration of cloud today of the enterprise spend overall is about 13 percent. We think similar to, to e-commerce, that penetration rate is going to go from 13 to over 50% penetration by the end of the decade. So great runway of opportunity. The risk lies in valuation. Uh, you have to really pick your spots carefully here in this cloud software group because people are confident in the profit potential of these business models. They're high gross margin models. Uh, the most mature companies generating 30, 40% free cash flow margins. And so people are willing to underwrite five, six years of duration risk. And so you really have to pick your spots carefully given uh, if there's a rise in interest rates, which we've seen, this group will absolutely come um, down from a multiple perspective. So you have to pick your spots Brent, carefully in this group. What's the worst area in cloud software, either because the, the growth isn't going to be there or because the valuation's gotten way out of control? You know, listen, I, I think there's a little bit of a crowded space in front office. Uh, that's really where you're seeing some, uh, a lot of proliferation of new ideas. We're actually quite bullish around back office. It's been a laggard in cloud. And so that's the area that we're most focused on, driving a change. Listen, there's a talent shortage uh, and you have to automate 
uh, because you can't hire. And uh, that back office space is probably the hottest space. I think front office might cool down a little bit. All right, front office. Uh, I like a specific answer. I appreciate it. Brent, thank you. <laughs> no problem. And keep an eye on Tesla. The company is selling its largest monthly total of vehicles in China since it started production in Shanghai two years ago. And after the break, one family lost $700,000 in cryptocurrencies. And now they tell us they can't get anyone to do anything about it. That's